Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, Dylan, appreciate the invites. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm, uh, we are, uh, I am the president of Milwaukee Hard Money. We also do uh, multifamily housing. We own and manage our own portfolio of 1,500 apartments in southeastern Wisconsin. Um, we do flip houses. Uh, how many of you guys are flipping houses? Okay, so we're out there flipping houses every once in a while. I started with Homevestors in 2003, the We Buy Ugly Houses franchise. I brought that to the state of Wisconsin, opened up in Milwaukee and in Madison, flipped about 150 houses during that period of time with Homevestors and got interested in lending. Um, Homevestors was basically a franchise program that allowed you to learn how to flip houses, but also to borrow money from the franchise program to be able to uh, do your flips and they brought you down for training like they would at McDonald's to learn how to make french fries you learn how to flip houses and then that gives you the ability to um, flip houses and then qualify for their financing program and that's what intrigued me the most was their financing program is how do I offer other investors the opportunity to flip houses or to buy and stabilize assets or to learn how to um, maximize the value on the after repair value of a property and then do cash outs um, and that was one of the things I was, I was good at when I got started in real estate. I started with nothing in August of 2003. Today we have 1,500 apartments and our portfolio is 100% leveraged, not loan to, to value, but loan to cost by being able to do cash out refis over and over and over again, and then put in bank debt in place of investor debt and get us to where we are today. So it's kind of a fascinating program where you start from and the cost of capital and then how do you get to the end game where you're a leveraged portfolio, not over leveraged, keep in mind, but just leveraged to the point where you can buy, generate the value, get some lender to agree with your value, cash out of that value to a 75% in today's day loan to value, and then move on to the next deal. And so well, um, that, that's something we've done and that's something that we're here to talk about briefly um, by way of discussion, it would be most beneficial if you have any questions or commentary. Um, it's much better to have dialogue than to listen to myself just talk to you guys. Um, I would appreciate any comments and discussion. It certainly gets the um, overall juices flowing, the investor minds working, and it's, it's a much better discussion. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Um, how many people are familiar with hard money, the terminology hard money? Okay, so hard money is simply an asset-based Lend, uh, lender, right? That's what we are. We're an asset base. So we never, and when I say with, with minor exception, really worry about the borrower at step one. We worry about the asset at step one, right? What am I going to take my first lien out on or my secured mortgage position out on, on the asset? And what's that asset worth? And so we look at that asset in many different ways, right? We look at that asset as what are you paying for it? And then we look at that asset as what is that property worth after you have successfully done what you think you're going to do, which is what we describe as the ARV or the after repaired value. And so we lend money on the after repaired value, the ARV, up to 65% of the ARV. And people say, well, how do you get that to happen? How do people find a deal where the ARV can let them come in with traditionally very little money, right? Because if you come in with a lot of money and you need to make a lot, you need to do stuff with your money, how many deals can you do? Not a lot. If you come in with a little bit of money, you can do a lot more deals or you can continue to leverage your portfolio to continue to be disciplined and grow the overall growth of what you're trying to accomplish, which is to A, be successful. I'm assuming you guys want to make money. If you don't, you, we do take donations. And the third part of it is obviously to continue to grow and leverage to get residual money coming in from the, from the rental portfolio. How many of you guys have rental rentals in your portfolio? So a good chunk of you guys are, are, are still working. And how many of you want to get to the rental portfolio business? Okay. So, we, so as you can see in a group of interested parties, right? We all have the same mindset. We have a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. Fixing and flipping, right? We want to just make cash, right? We haven't started to think about, we want to make cash, but we want to make cash while we're on the beach somewhere in another part of the world so that the rental income is coming in and life keeps going, right? So that's a second piece of it that everybody who's just in the fix and flip game needs to start thinking about. And so 
as an asset-based lender, we predominantly look at the asset. And what is our mindset, right? Let me explain it to you. It's kind of convoluted. What I think is when I lend you money, if you are not capable, diligent, and professional enough to get the job done, I'll do it for you. We're going to foreclose. We're going to go through the process. But at the end of the day, we will be successful. And so for the past 10 years, we've taken back an aggregate of many different properties. But I can tell you at the end of the year, we have never lost money on those aggregate total properties because I can find a solution. And so could you guys or everybody else. If you have a will, there's a way. And so, um, so, so that's basically what a hard money lender is. There's, there's hard money lenders that are described also as private lenders. And those are friends, family that are lending you money. Um, they're lending you money based on your asset, right? Some are lending it because they like you. Some are lending it to you, but it's predominantly based on private lending, asset-based. Um, our program at Milwaukee Hard Money is a 65% after repaired value. We will require you to bring 10% down on your, only on your purchase price, and we will finance 100% of your repairs. So think through that. If you're gonna buy a house for $50,000, you're gonna have to come up with $5,000 of down payment money. But if you're gonna put $50,000 of repairs into that house, because we know the ARV is gonna be 180 when we're all done, you're coming into the deal with 5%, excuse me, 10% down or 5,000 plus our fees. Yes, fees are expensive in lending and short-term hard money lending. But how hard will you work to earn $20,000? Hard? $30,000, a little harder? right? $40,000. We also probably want to work pretty hard to get to $40,000, right? There are people, as we know, that might work an entire calendar year to make $20,000 or might work an entire 2,080 hours to make $30,000 a year. And we can do that in real estate by flipping one house. So put perspective of where we are in the world. We're all in really good seats inside of smart assets right now with the right mindset that we can do this right you're all here you all want to make this happen right so it's it's a fascinating position and we are one source of capital a little bit more about what makes us uh, advantageous is we don't care if there's no roof on the property because we're assuming you're probably gonna put one on plumbing doesn't need to be there um, all of the other FHA guidelines that might require to be in place we understand might not be there we also can close in as soon as 10 days or sooner and so if you take the old adage, time is money, it sure is, right? How can you go out and compete with, let's say, someone that's out there flipping houses, that does it for a living that doesn't need cash? How can you compete with them? There's only one way. Be a cash buyer. Pretend. Be good at what you're doing. Sell yourself that you can get the deal done in 10 days, right? And so how do you do that? You do that with hard money. You do that with private lending. You do that with the asset-based lending that we provide. And so, um, so, so understanding all of that, people ask, well, how do I get started? And I always tell people to get started, first of all, write down a business plan. Think about what you want to accomplish while you are out there. I want to fix and flip because I want to make $35,000. It's a great goal. Write it down. Let's start looking at properties that we know we can make $35,000 or I want to buy and fix these properties and have my average door cost under $30,000 a unit. Another good way to do it, right? When I was starting to buy rentals, I said to myself, I want to have net net cash flow post following debt service and amortization of $150 of cash per door per month. So do the math. You want to make $15,000 a month, how many doors do we need to have? Simple math, right? You have a thought? No? So, okay. Um, so, yes, sir. So the 10% down, is that just for residential properties or you guys do that for like for commercial properties as well? So we, we, every property we lend on, that's a great question. We do not lend on any, what we describe as owner-occupied properties. So every property that we at Milwaukee Hard Money lend on is non-owner-occupied real estate. So that can be a commercial building like we're sitting in today. It can be a single family house. 
It can be a duplex, it can be an eight family, a 20 unit uh, rooming house that we're looking at right now. It's a 28 unit rooming house. It, it doesn't matter. We just will not lend money to somebody who's going to owner occupy the house. So as a lender, we lend on non owner occupied real estate, just as a general number. And if you take that one step further, we describe that all as commercial real estate because we only lend to LLCs. So you have to be a limited liability company to, for us to lend money to you. And so we're doing, and the reason for that is we only lend to businesses. So business to business lending, and we get out of the consumer lending world, which is governed by the Frank Dodd Act and all of these other ridiculous items, which you probably have seen if you've ever flipped a house and someone's selling it, all the disclosures and the HUDs that you're signing saying, I don't even know what they're saying. And you probably don't know what they're saying because you're not reading them, but I understand. And so, um, so, so everyone know how to get an LLC in the state of Wisconsin? WDFI.org, 125 or 130 bucks today. Easy, easy, get it done. Um, any other questions before we carry on? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. <laughs> so will you take collateral property? Good one. Yeah, so how many people of you guys have some properties that are free and clear? Right? So we use those as in exchange for cash. We use those in exchange for money down. We will take a collateral property and secure it as part of our first mortgage. And then you won't have to come in with any money. So now you've taken an asset that you bought, you stabilized, you rented it, you own it for, no, for nothing. Instead of doing a cash out refi on that deal, you can just put it up as security. And then we will encumber both properties. And then when you sell one, you re we release both. And so collateral properties is, is, has been a very big part of our business. There's a lot of people out there that own real estate free and clear. And they, but they don't know how to get to the money off of that. And so we help them through collateral properties. Um, a, a couple other things to just talk about with hard money in our particular program, we're short term. So when I say come in with a plan, come in with a plan. We're traditionally six months and that should give you enough time to buy, fix and flip, buy, fix, stabilize, refinance. And so with that in mind, um, we are a short term lender. Um, all of our decisions, so we're a, we're a balance sheet lender, we, we lend ourselves, so we don't go to a third party to sell. So a couple things to consider, right? When you go to the market and you're dealing with Waterstone Bank, for example, they're a direct lender. If you go to a mortgage broker, they are brokering it between Waterstone Bank and PNC Bank and all the other banks, and they're getting a fee and or yield spread, but they're not the ones making the decisions. When you go to the direct lender, Milwaukee Hard Money, or if you go to Waterstone Bank, they make the decision at their loan committee. So you're, you're talking, it's a little bit of a different conversation. And so there's a lot of brokers out there that are representing themselves as lenders. In reality, they're not, and they don't care about you. They want to earn a point. And so they travel down the world of representing themselves so they can do things that they might not want to. It's like the property flipper who's trying to wholesale the property who doesn't care that he's never going to close on the contract or if he can't sell it, he just walks from it, right? And so we do want to try to maintain our ethics in the industry to make sure that we are not doing those things. And so we're a direct lender. If I tell you that your loan is approved, we'll see you at closing. And closing then can be scheduled um, you know, during the period of time that works for you. Yes, sir. So is the... Is the deal based off of your credit as well? So I can tell you in the 15 years I've been lending money, I've pulled credit three times. Okay. So what happens in our industry, right, is we have a lot of people that, how many people don't have W-2 jobs? Have flip real estate, right? Me, you, you, right? Right, we work for ourselves, right? And so, back in the historical days when people were working just for cash and then, but they were great borrowers. They say, well, I've got a lot of money. Where is it? How did you earn it? Well, like whatever. And the answer is, well, for traditional lending, that doesn't work. And then credit scores are another thing. If some people don't have credit or haven't established credit or have made some mistakes in their lives, credit then gets down into the numbers where um, one, where a financing company might not, we always look at the asset. And so, um, it's just a little different type of lending. Yeah, how many points did you guys? Uh... So our traditional loan, our traditional loan costs five points 
of closing costs. So on a five thousand on a fifty thousand dollar loan, it's twenty five hundred dollars. So in my fifteen years of lending, I've never negotiated the points on that either. So <laughs> and it's not that we don't. Let me let me. I'd like to walk you through it again, and, and this is not a measure of discussing what we're doing, but we're talking about next Wednesday, we're doing a scenario where um, we're doing a, a webinar and, and talking about flipping a house, but we bring tremendous value to you as a borrower because I'm going to be your crutch or your aid to, for you to go or you to go or you to go or you to go to go make $50,000. So if I told you, here's pay me $5,000 and you'll make $50,000. How many times will you do that? Right. And so our value comes is that we, from a decision level, invest the time in our borrowers. We invest the time in the project you're going to do. And then you become successful. We're happy for you. How many of you guys have partners? We all hate them, right? <laughs> right? I've been down the partnership road for a hundred different years. Partners just take money from you, right? We all agree with that. Maybe not. Some of them are value. I don't know. <laughs> My point in saying that, though, is if you say to anybody, if you're a partner, right, what are we? We're going to go deal. We're partners. What, what percentage are you? Well, I'm 52. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're 50-50. Now, as a lender, I'm defined. I'm five. I'm a 5% 5 partner on day one. Then you pay your interest. If you get it done in three months... Your total percentage that I'm taking out of your profits is probably 9%, maybe 10%. So would you rather give up the 10 or the 12% to your lender and keep the other 88? Yeah. So you have to kind of walk through it, right? What does a partner usually bring to a relationship? One brings money, one brings brains. Have you ever heard this, you know, right? Okay. Well, if you've got the brains and you don't have the money, we can help with that. If you have the money and not the brains, we got a problem. So think through it. You know what I'm saying? It's, you've got to understand that the value that can be created on your own by the confidence level that you have the money behind you to go be successful in a project you're going to do is worth a lot of money. And it's just because you get to keep more of it. Um, any questions? Any other thoughts? Um, I, I've left as just a point of reference for everyone on the back sheet. We, we do have in a, a 11 uh, step checklist that, oh, Sarah passed them out. Sorry. Um, an 11 step checklist on how to uh, go through our lending process. Um, you can also find this at milwaukeeheartmoney.com. Um, this will go through basically the entire process of borrowing money to paying it off um, and every, everything in between there. So, um, if this is a great resource, hopefully you get to use it. Um, as far as the process goes to get started with us or other lenders, we have a website. Everything's done through our web portal. So if you go to MilwaukeeAirMoney.com, you submit a loan application, we will then get back to you within 24 hours. We would like to see offers. We can issue you pre-approval letters without an offer, specific address, generic address. If you want to just go in the market and start shopping. If you're working with the smart-ass brokers and they want to go start writing offers, uh, Dylan's calls us, but we can get, we can get for sure – pre-approvals out for you guys right away. Um, we do get calls from other agents saying, are these people for real? Absolutely. We don't just write these. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of confidence that happens between what we're doing, working with our borrowers and the agents to make sure that they understand also what hard money is. Um, it's as good as cash. Um, so um, it's important that you're picking the right people to work with, um, picking the right lenders to work with and overall, um, you know, working towards being successful. Yes, sir. So what are some like, you know, in a few scenarios where someone's not flipping and they're going to buy and hold that they might let them run? Yeah, so buy and hold is, is buy and hold strategy for me has been, has been other people's money to leverage the portfolio. It's the, the number one thing, right? So if you look at, um, um, everyone know Joe Barada and Barada Properties? He's a master at this, okay? Think about what happens. He's willing to buy a property. He's got a tremendous crew and he's disciplined. So he goes in and he'll say, I'm gonna buy a property for 20,000 a unit. I'm gonna put 5,000 into each unit. 
And when he does that, he doesn't cut corners. People can argue that they don't think his uh, des architectural design is, uh, is going to win any awards, but he doesn't care. When you walk by his properties, they all look the same and his units get fully redone. Within 60 days, he's fully leased and back to the market, the final market to cash out refi. And at some times, walking out of deals, walking out of deals 60 days later with a million dollars, not cash, not a few bucks, not some spending dollars, a million dollars, which he then goes and does to the next property. How do you do that? That's what we've done in our portfolio as a different value level, right? We started with a duplex. How many people love duplexes? I do. Two rents, one. It's great. So you have, you have duplexes. And you're getting 650 aside, or you're getting 750 aside, or in some other neighbors you're getting 1500. You can leverage that that number to do a cash out refi based on value. That's the trick, right? Who does those types of deals? Waukesha State Bank, Waterstone Bank, um, Commerce State Bank. I mean, there's the list goes on. People State Bank. There's a millions of them. So to leverage a rental portfolio. That's how you do it with hard money is you buy a distressed asset that doesn't have the granite countertops and the nice tiles around and doesn't have the tubs. It's, it's 1970s, right? And 1970s gets you what kind of rent? You got it. 1970s rent. Okay. We're, now if we bring it to 2020 and we put in the granite and we put in the nice uh, tub surrounds and we put in the nice tile everywhere and we refinish those hardwood floors that haven't been refinished in 40 years and we do all of this amazing stuff, what rent can we get? Yeah, $300 more aside, right? So instead of getting $600, you are getting $900. If you're getting $900 and a leverage value, how many people are familiar with cap rates? Right? So if we take just the cap rate value of $600 on a cap rate basis, on a monthly basis, or on a taken on an annualized basis, your value is so significant. And then you leverage that value, so long as you are properly managing your portfolio, it should happen over and over and over again. It is better than any drug out there is that process. Once you get that process down, it is, it is, it is the aha moment in every real estate investor's life. Aha, I figured this out. And if you haven't figured it out, let's keep talking because you should figure it out to the point where you can get to the point where you're adding rental properties, getting cash, don't do anything stupid with the cash. You don't need another car. You don't need a watch. You don't need anything else. Put it right back into the real estate. And if you do that discipline for over three years or five years, you're going to be really happy that you, that you maintain the discipline. And don't forget, in 2008, there were a lot of foreclosures, and there's still a lot of foreclosures in 2020. There's always deals, right? The deals in real estate never change. It's, it, it's a function of emotion, right? We have a motivated seller somewhere along the way. Find them, make a good offer, and then make the property right. Yes, sir. Uh, so are you going into this basically, you're looking for a six month turnaround time? Are you going into this with a relationship where you can build, say, a walk shop state bank or something like that for an exit? Or are you having problems right now and not holding property for a year, two years? Are you able to refinance this property pretty easily in a six month period? Or is that a bit of a struggle? So in, I've, as of 20 years of being in real estate, this is the hardest lending climate I've ever been part of. I've had to delay two transactions of my own personal that, were that I'm supposed to be closing on next week are not closing. I mean, it's been, it's been mayhem, right? And you have to remember though, how do banks make money? Lending money. If they don't lend money, they can't make returns. That's the only way banks make money. That's it. Generating loans and servicing them. That's it. That's how they make money. So at some point I keep telling these people that are very frustrating. I say at some point you're going to have to lend money, right? So I'll just sit here and keep arguing with you and, and you get to where you need to be. So the answer is yes, it's hard. You're also asking a very good question related to the terminology seasoning. And if no one understands or has heard of that term seasoning before, it equates to title. How long have you seasoned that title, right? How long have you smoked that steak or whatever you're doing, right? So six months traditionally is the minimum. And usually traditionally the seasoning of title is required to be 12 months. This is where you have to become a salesman. 
you have to go in to the bank and sell them on all of the amazing stuff you've done. I fixed the floors. I got a new roof on. I put new windows in. The hardwood floors are amazing. The rent were 500. Now they're 900 aside. Why can we not look at this value? Let's go get an appraisal. And it takes time, right? You have to build up that relationship. And so as you gain your confidence, plan on 12 months. Plan on building a portfolio. It might take you a little longer. That's okay. All you got is time. And during that time, by the way, you're making $150 a side per unit and there you go. So yes, it, it is an issue and today is a tough climate, but I always wake up the next morning with my chin up ready to go get it because I know what's going to happen, right? The world's still a great place and despite the challenges we're in today, there will be a bright day tomorrow. So what else? So you do mixed units? Like a mixed-use mix building? Yes. Yeah. We'll lend on anything. We, we look at the asset. So I'll give you, I mean, we can look at the asset and tell you the answer in, I don't know, 10 minutes. I mean, it, it happens relatively quickly inside of our world. We look at the asset. We look at the product. We don't, we're not a big lender of bars, for example. Why? Because they're just a pain, right? I mean, people walk in normal and they leave not normal. So it's, you know, it's, you, you, they're not really a great place to lend money on, but um, you know, so, so we, we look at all assets all over the category, asset categories. We do land, not lo don't love land, but we, we do land. We do mixed units, multifamily. We've done a few condos. Our predominant business is single family and multifamily deals. And so get creative, um, figure out how you can leverage. There's a video that we did film two years ago, three years ago on leveraging. And it's a great asset of building that I did in uh, Shorewood. When we bought a duplex for 140,000, it's worth 320 now. We leveraged it, and you can go through the whole scenario. And we kind of go through that with you. And now those rents are 1650; they were 1400. So another 500 dollars in rent a month, or 6,000 dollars a year. Put that at a seven cap on valuation, and you just you keep the project keeps coming out great. So yeah, when I said. I mentioned it briefly, but on Wednesday, we are doing a workshop on how to fix and flip houses. If that's something of interest to you, certainly jump on the webinar at noon. Um, you know, I, I guess, um, you know, that, I guess that's, hold on a second. Uh, Dylan, confirm. We are, so here's, here's, uh, we are buying together and then I do a leg work and you take 10% good. If I mess up, you just take over the project or do I need to put my own asset up as collateral? Um, um, I think that's Arturo. Arturo, can you maybe say that again or a different way? Um, sorry. Um, I didn't understand the question. Um, um, I guess otherwise, um, we've got some great resources on our website and our YouTube channel. If that's interesting to you, um, I would, I would say, um, you know, as a measure of thanking smart assets for being out here, you know, it's very important to us who you're working with in the, in the real estate community. And these guys are true professionals that know what they're doing. They can certainly get deals done for you guys and, and we're happy to assist in any way. So be sure you're working with the right group of people. And, um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Yes, sir. Yeah, so there's two ways to do that in an offer, right? So in a traditional offer, if you use a standard WB11 form or whatever you're using to convey that you're, you'd like to buy a piece of property, you can just not check any finance contingencies, right? I have no finance contingencies, and you can then write in the comments, I am using, I am, I am using hard money lender or private lending as, as a commentary, right? That's one. So you are then going uncontingent, right? So you're going to put up something called earnest money, which it will then be, you won't have an ability to get out of it if you don't have a contingency related to finance. So that's one way. I, I've, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things you have to figure out, are you ready to get punched in your stomach and lose a little win or not, right? And that's really what I equate it to. You have to be able to buy property knowing that you can solve the problem. 
if you don't have that gut check, then keep getting comfortable with real estate because it takes time, right? What are the biggest, what is the biggest challenge you can have, right? If I look at a single family house, the biggest challenge I could potentially have that's going to rock my world is I might have to put drain piles and foundation walls in, right? Might, that would aggravate me. But it's just one thing. Money. That's all it is, right? And so if you look at the process to which you're going through, right? So I just did a rehab in Brookfield and we had to put drain tiles in and fix the foundation wall and it sucked. But when I went to list it, then the buyer giving me $20,000 over asking price did suck, right? So you have to just have that gut check. I can get this done. And so as, as, a, as a person who's walked through probably, I don't know, 2,000 different houses for investment purposes, I usually walk in and I'm out in five minutes. And you're like, what? I'm like, that'll be $50,000. Because you know, right? You can see just in your mind, and I used to put them in the categories, 20, 40, 60. What am I spending? 20, 40, 60. And always lean in the side of where you're comfortable and what you're comfortable doing. But you have to have that stomach, right? You have to be able to go to sleep. And there were nights that I didn't, right? I bought a duplex on 37th in Glendale, my first property, right? And I was like, holy shit, what is this? And then I bought an eight family on 27th in Roosevelt. And I'm like, oh my God. And I paid at that time, $12,000 a door. I bought 400 units on Wells Street. I paid $8,000 a door. What am I thinking? At 8,000, what can go wrong? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it, nothing's gone wrong. Yes, you've dealt with the nonsense, right? Yes, people haven't paid rent. Yes, we evict people every day. Yes, it sucks. But you just have to have the stomach to say, I can get through this, right? But I'll tell you, don't cut the corners. Don't try to get out of it by not spending your way out of it. Spend your way out of it in efficient fashion. What happens in our, in our business when somebody calls me and says, I did not realize in my scope of work that the foundation wall needs to be done. What happens? What happens when you call BMO and say, I just need a few more dollars? I'm assuming they hang up on you, right? When you call me, I go out to the property, I understand what your problem is, and I'll advance you that money. I don't like to, but we have two solutions. You're going to fail, or I'm going to give you the money, and you're going to be successful. Which would you rather do? The second one, as a lender, I'm in the business of lending money and getting money back. We want you to be successful so we can get through it with you. Advantages. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you speak to the, uh, the process of how you get on dogs for these repairs? Yes, so we have a, it's a great question. Thank you for that. So we have what you call a, we, we, so we finance 100% of our draws excuse me, hundred percent of the scope of work that you want to do. So on our website, we have what we call scope of work and under the scope of work, there's another video that I filmed in our Brookfield property, but under scope of work, I ask you to be as detailed as possible. I'm going to fix the kitchen, $8,000 bad. I'm going to fix the kitchen by doing the hardwood floors, putting a new tile, add appliances with detailed line items. That lets me then when you hit, when you submit your repair draw, we then can come out and look to say that you have said you've done the floors. Well, it's pretty easy to see the floors or the roof or the gutters or the foundation or the drywall or the paint and whatever that matches up to a plus B equals we send you your money. It's that simple, right? And so we go out and do inspections. Um, and we look at the, we look at what you say you've done. If it's done, we then ACH you the money and it's in your account the next morning. So we go out and inspect. The biggest risk to me is when you say you're going to go and do something, like I'm going to go buy some windows and therefore property on 38th Street and they end up at 92nd Street, right? Because I'm paying for windows on 38th Street that never went. So that's where our draw process is very tight, but it's intended that way, but we will pay you right away without a doubt. And so we give $3,000 at closing if you're part of it, to get your materials started. And then after that, we only pay on completed work. What's the uh, uh, draw amount? Whatever you ask for. Then, um, the fee? Yeah. $200. $200. And that's uh, per draw. Let me explain. We 
have had borrowers that would do a draw for a door for 50 bucks and a draw for, we would like to work with the, the mindset of have us out there as few times as possible, but we'll come out as often as you want. So. Do you do uh, like multi-deals? So if I want to say I want to buy three or four properties and fix them all up, can you do something to, to do a loan like that? Um, yes. So, so we have borrowers that will do 40 deals a year with us. And we have borrowers that will do two or one. Um, we, we like to walk before we run. We like to make sure that the people we're dealing with are capable and responsible to make their payments on time, to handle their insurance like they say they're going to do. The people that come up, I mean, I can give you the list of them right now if I wanted to just start spitting them off. Don't have insurance or haven't paid their bills or has a problem or something's happened. I, you know, are those the people we want to continue to do work with? No. But then the other people that are on their hand that will send us an offer today and say, can you get it done tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. We'll move the mountains for you. So, yes, sir. You only lend in first position, or would you ever do second? Yeah, I mean, I would say from a generality sake, we're a first lien lender. So, um, does everyone know what that means? So, what he's asking is, will you ever take a subordinate loan or a second mortgage position? And so, traditionally, we would only be the first lender, which is a senior lender. In some environments, you'll see a, a senior lender, and then you have a HELOC, right? Anyone got a HELOC on their house? Okay, so a HELOC is a secondary mortgage, right? It's just subordinate to the first mortgage. And those then come at, they're traditionally lines of credit that go up and down and they're at a lower interest rate and they're out there. You can get those. So we traditionally are the first thing. We like to be the purchase money and we like to be the repair money. Uh, there's a question here. It says, Scott, what lenders do you know that lend on the Airbnb cash flow versus traditional rents for the refinance of completed projects? Um, good question. So traditionally what happens in that environment where people are, are rent, anyone doing Airbnb? So Airbnb is a great opportunity, right? So I rent some of my, my units to Airbnb. I use a company called front desk. They're a third party administrator. They lease the unit from me and you can either pay them rent. They can either pay you rent or you can be their partner 50, 50. And so which one did I go with? 50 50. Come on, I'm out here taking risks, guy. Come on. So, 50 50. I knew you were going to say it. So, 50 50. And so, if my traditional rent is 900, and last month they paid us. No, 13 12. Because they got 2,600 for the apartment for the month. So, I got half of that. So, I was able to earn $400 more. So, what. Uh, uh, what Mike is asking is. How do you get someone to lend money on that? And the answer is it's probably pretty hard because it's not stabilized, right? You can't predict what that income will be. But what you can do is you can say, I can get this or that, and then they would probably predict it on $700 or $900. I will tell you that we have some Airbnbs out at our resort out in West Bend, and we're getting, this will be our best year ever. We normally will rent a place for $18,000 for the season, and we're at $36,000 for this year for Airbnb. Every night has been taken. So Airbnb is a great opportunity. It's a great outlet um, to, to find tenants that'll pay you more. It's 50 bucks, $100 a night. $100 a night on a single family house for 30 days, 3,000. You normally get 1,200. Take it. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to know, um, do you guys foresee um, the development of like extending the walkthrough around the main property? So we do lend on city of Milwaukee properties. Okay. That, that's that we do do it. I I've, I've also over the course of uh, my period of time, we've lost, if we've, if we've ever taken a loss, it's been on that asset class. Why is that? Right? Cause our borrower, it's not the, it's not the property. It's the borrower. Don't, don't forget at the end of the day, it's you, right? You control your own destiny. Well, my dog ate my homework, the cat peed on the thing, blah, blah, blah. And I could, okay, well, okay, move away. You know what I mean? Step aside, someone else will take over. And so, um, Dylan just sold a, a portfolio of ours for 12 houses. I lent this to an individual. He bought 12 of them from the city of Milwaukee at once. He rented them, he sold a few of them, and then he imploded. And during that time, he bought a $250,000 sports car. Um, 
he so he imploded in his own mind, right? What's important to him was the two hundred fifty thousand dollars sports car. Was all the other crap? I saw him out everywhere. He was just donking away his money, and now he's left with we call it the spree will, right? You're left with nothing after one hundred twelve million. So figure. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't make sense, right? You want to get past that. And so he didn't. Dylan sold it to another group out of Cali, right? California. And they're going to be successful with it. Yeah. Well, go whoop their butts. Don't just sit there and get deflated. What else? Yes, sir. There is no well, so there are hard feelings, but not mine. Um, and there, there are personal guarantees. Um, we, you know, we lend to people and we lend to LLCs. And so, yes, um, I'll tell you the lending, the that part of the business is very convoluted in terms of the legal process. For he's he's a, he has a common name, lives in Illinois. I mean, the chances of finding him. I mean, he's but but I'll tell you this: he's a professional runner, right? So he's always looking behind his back, catch me if you can type of guy. I mean, you, why not just be successful? I, I, I still don't understand it, but there are psyches of lunatics out there that will try to do that. And they'll, they'll, they were there 20 years ago, they were there a thousand years ago, and they're still here tomorrow. So, What else? Everyone get a beer, some pizza. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, thank you all for being here. Um, thanks, Smart Asses, for hosting this amazing event. Appreciate the having us. Um, my, my business card's on the ping pong table. Um, my cell phone number's on there. My email's on there. If anyone was too shy to have a question here today, feel free to text or call. Um, we're always around. We like to be active. You know, we're a local group and we want to continue to support the local investment community. So if there's anything we do for any of you guys, don't be shy and thank you all for being here. Stay safe.